this is a very interesting question. So sometimes uh, governments know very precisely why they're innovating and sometimes they don't know at all why this is necessary. And paradoxically, both situations are very good because first of all, sometimes governments know which challenges they have to solve. For example, oceans need cleaning up, uh, we need to solve the issue of homelessness and we need uh, innovation specifically to reach that target. So we have direction for our innovation activities. Um, this is a very clear-cut way to actually structure innovation in government because it is uh, legitimized, the problem itself legitimizes the need for innovation. But there are also other situations where you know, governments innovate just for the sake of it, for the ability of the people to explore new things, to explore new ideas, to be creative in solving uh, the challenges that their citizens face. And this is also needed because uh, the glory of innovation is that uh, it's something new and uncertain. We actually don't know where the next big thing is uh, coming from. So we need to allow people to explore new ideas. In the private sector, we call this entrepreneurial discovery. So it's usually the most uh, transformative ideas come from people who have the license to just play around and explore new thinking. Um, that is where uh, the idea of the combustion engine, uh, the several other private sector innovations in their origin are actually uh, coming from. So this should be also allowed in the public sector because also services and products that the public sector provide uh, need a revamp, need transformation, need to make the, the services better as they are. And the third uh, reason why uh, civil servants in public sectors also need to innovate is about the ability to innovate itself. Nobody becomes or, um, an innovator just uh, as is. So we, don't, we are not born innovators. So we learn to explore new ideas and think in a new way by doing it. So learning by doing. So we also need to have a certain license to explore, to experiment with new ideas, to actually apply them in practice so we can uh, have the ability to innovate uh, when it's needed. So when a new big challenge arises, uh, we have the people with the capacity to build up projects in totally new ways, to solve problems in new ways, because they have done it before. And this is a trend we see in governments today as well. So in Finland, for example, uh, there is a new uh, program on experimentation on the central government level. The same has been happening uh, in Canada, where there's an experimentation directive in action. So uh, different uh, departments in government can experiment with different uh, policy ideas to explore if they are possible before applying them on the grand scale. And last but not least, Sometimes government also innovate not to be left behind. So governments innovate because their neighbors are doing it. And that's not bad either, because unexplored options are also costs. We have to explore different kinds of options to actually uh, be in the game when one of those options becomes uh, something that, that needs to be addressed. This is what uh, companies in the private sector continuously do. So big companies like Apple or Sony or others are continuously exploring different options and different solutions for or new ideas for things, not because maybe that they have a great idea about how to apply them now, but it might be something that becomes a thing in the future. These are all valid reasons why governments should innovate, but of course these activities are very different. So also different kind of methods are needed for these different activities.